Uh, welcome to the Morris Federation's uh, workshop uh, Cotswold for Beginners and I'm going to hand straight over to Andrew Knight and Lynn Steele of the Knights of King Ina jig team in Somerset and they're going to um, show you how to do a Cotswold jig. Over to you. Thank you Pauline. Um, it'll be part of a Cotswold jig that you'll be learning today. The other parts of it will come in over the next two weekends. Um, and that will complete the whole jig by the end of the session. So um, you'll be able to hopefully dance that out next summer. Got my fingers crossed on that one. Um, we will. <laughs> we will. Um, thank you all for joining us. That's that's great. And um, nice to see there's uh, such an international audience uh, in the in the room today. Um, and a special welcome to Ab from Holland. And um, and I looked uh, to to help him out early on in lockdown with um, with exactly this jig or very nearly this jig, so it's great to see him here today. Um, to those who don't know me, Andrew Knight is me. Lynn Steele is um, possibly next to me that way or maybe that way, um, and um, she's going to be helping when I'm out of breath and can't do any more talking, um, and then I'll probably be doing the talking when she's out of breath. Um, what we're going to do right at the very beginning is um, run through a bit of a warm up, then I'll do some stepping. So forgive me, those who are those who are really quite good at stepping already, um, but we are going to be looking at it. And uh, the some people I know like to see a front view when they're trying to learn a dance and some prefer a back view to follow when they're learning a dance. If you take a look at uh, the window called Drew, D-R-E-W. Um, that's me, but it will be looking at it from behind. And this one, Andrew Knight, looking at me from in front. Um, the front one will have more of a top view and the, um, the Drew one will have more of a foot view. So whichever you find easiest to follow, um, best off if you pin that one and uh, then you'll be able to get some um, then you'll be able to get to, to, to follow it and to see it and you might want to just switch between the two okay so we've got a bit to get through so we're going to start off with just some warming up i'm going to move away from the computer so i'm probably going to yell a bit more um i apologize if it's too loud too soft but um i think actually the only other thing to say is if you get stuff and you're happy when I ask, do a moving two thumbs up. And if you're not happy and you want me to go through it again, stand with your hands on your head. Yeah, um, and if you've got any comments that you need to make, please um, pop them in the chat and Pauline and Jenny will be picking them up and, and relaying them. And uh, then we'll be able to, uh, to hopefully give you any um, extra bits and pointers that you need. The music is going to be live. The gentleman playing it, Tony, is sat in his car outside, so he's completely socially distanced from me. Um, and he's allowed to be out there, but not in here. <laughs> Under the current regulations, um, which keeps both of us in the safe positions that we should be in. And um, right, well, let's see how we get on. Any questions, do please flag them up and we'll try to sort them out. Right, so the first thing is warming up and that literally is just to get the blood flowing around your body. So you're literally going to be just moving your arms first of all, from the elbows and from the shoulders, and out to the side and above your head. You're going to need movements that go up above your head, so your shoulders need to be going up in that direction, and then up in front and out behind, and then moving from foot to foot, and then rising more and more, so you do things with more vigor. Let your arms swing lightly, pick the pace up, and then just add some, a little bit of hopping, so that you bounce on the floor. 
Then go to the side. And don't forget your arms, put your arms in with it. Above the head, as well as out in front. And after doing that for a few moments, you will find that things are going okay. And with all warm ups, you're not going to do any big long stretches, but you are going to extend the, the joints to the ends of their ranges. So you want to start putting in a few galley type movements, really lifting your legs up high. So you circle your, your hips and then take a bit of a rest, bank it back. And then when you get really, the breath really rising, start with some lunges down to the floor and then back, but don't over push the ranges and don't be too vigorous at the beginning. This is something that you work into after a short while. <clears throat> Sorry, just give me breath. Can I just jump in there and just, just to say that um, the importance of warming up, especially as we get older, I teach a lot of older people, um, you need to warm up before launching into a, a jig or any other type of lively dance. Things stiffen up as we get older, I'm afraid. <laughs> so we do need to remember that importance of warming up a little bit. Okay. Okay, so we're now gonna do some good stepping practice. Uh, this is a standard Cotswold stepping. It's a double stepping. Most of you will be familiar with it in some form or another, possibly under a different name. And what we're going to do is to go from foot to foot and then hop on the fourth element. So you are going to end up doing a right foot landing to begin with. So it's to be right, left, right, hop on the right, left, right, left, hop on the left. Now with this, we want to stay on the toes. We don't want to hit any heel landings. And normally I can hear heel landings when I'm teaching people, which is a little bit more difficult right now. But the whole thing should be literally raised up on the toes and the, head, the foot is cooked forwards, crooked forwards, and it's taken with a loose knee. So if I can show you, it's that. I have, um, I have a wood laminate floor on my floor and I can just hear the taps that you can hear, but the herd of elephant version, you definitely aren't looking for. Okay, the other thing that will make this much easier is if you use your body posture correctly and keep a vertical line between your ear and your shoulder and your hip, then down to the point in the floor where you want to take that weight. If you get into that posture, you'll get more lift in the dance. So if you kind of dance like a sacus buzz, it'll be heavy into the floor. Yet if you come up and raise up onto your toes, you'll find that you'll get much more spring. Change, 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 hop. So practice this, and the homework for the next week is to practice this. Um, we like to do, we'd like to give people wall kicking to do. So you should kick the wall on every footfall. So you're going to literally kick, kick, kick. It goes out of, out the front. Whereas a common error with this is people using a backward second step. So they're running on the spot effectively. Running on the spot is not Cotswold stepping. Okay, so if I show you what I mean, <clears throat> if I'm running on the spot, I'll do that. See what I'm doing with the second step? 
we're definitely trying to do forwards. This is correct. This is wrong. This is correct. Does that make sense to anybody? Everybody gets that? Yes. How many screens do I have to look at? Four. We're all good. Brilliant. Excellent. So next time you take a look at some YouTube videos and you see people dancing, Take a look at their stepping. Just have a look and you'll get good indicators of people who've understood that and people who haven't. It's a very common error at the beginning of dancing and it's something that we very often have to correct later. It just takes a lot of time and practice and patience and constantly reminding yourself that that's what you need to do. And there really is no other way to do it other than just to keep focused and eventually it will be fine to do that. Okay, so for Ilmington, which we're going to do, we're now gonna do a series of, set of double steps like that, and we're gonna put the hand movements with it. The hand movements are from the notation that I've constructed this from, are from the up position, and the up position is hands at shoulder height, not hands above your head, Hands at shoulder height is high up, whereas up is literally just out in front, maybe slightly raised. And then you're gonna go down towards your waist. And then as you do the last part, you flare your hands out to the side. If you look at Lynn, she's demonstrating it as I speak. Say something, Lynn. Yes, hello. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> She's going to go. So on one and two, your hands are coming down. On three, the hands are flared behind. And on the hop, they come back up in front. So it literally will be one down, two, flare, up, one down, two, flare, up. So we're going to do a series of those. And um, we'll just keep doing that for a moment until we've got that timed in. Okay, keep going with that for a minute. I'm watching you doing it. Okay, so is it a six eight tune tone? Six eight. Um, I'm just checking that the music um, timing inflection. Um, being a totally non-musical person, which I am, um, I sometimes have a few a few issues that are going around just exactly how the musical timing goes. And the next thing I'd like to <clears throat> like to take a look at is the, the, the inflection of the steps in the tune, because not all of the footfalls are going to be even in the double step. If it's a six, eight tune, you're going to do a longer step and then a shorter step and then a pause before the hop. And it's a subtle, change in the way that the rhythm of those steps comes um, and it's really worth looking at that whole thing six eight yeah okay so we want to just try and change the inflection of the the tunes very the, the stepping very slightly so you're doing 
long, quick, long, quick in the, the, the stepping. Right, I'm gonna do some of that um, and you can see what I mean. And if you want to look at Lynn, she's probably a, a better example than me on this one, to be fair. Okay, I'm not hearing any music. Music only comes across when uh, you're not making a noise, Andrew and Lynn. I think it's your feet. I think we probably need to turn off one of your, the yeah, sound I, on one of okay. your. Um, I'm not hearing it at all, even when I wasn't moving, I'm not hearing it. It won't be Lynn, it'll be me. <laughs> it's very, I think right, it's okay. his feet. Um, it, what I'll do then is I'll take my shoes off. Well, Andrew, <laughs> can I'll we mute one off. of your cameras? Can we mute one of your cameras? Uh, yeah, use the mute the Drew one. Yeah, that's the one I'm close to. Yeah, I, I wasn't hearing it at all. Not I could hear it very slightly. No. Jenny, I can't seem to mute that one. Um, maybe I can do it a different way. Hold on a sec. I do have the music here. I could use, but it won't be in time with Tony. No. I think it's muted already. Yeah, I can't mute it either. It's like we had yesterday. I think it is I'll muted. Take shoes off. Let's see if that makes a difference. Yeah, okay. That work better? A little bit. Not I got, really a bit I got the beginning, so I just kept going at my own speed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I in, okay. in that case, I'd better not do the dance because I'm obviously mucking it up. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, either that or I've got to, chair, got to mute the tablet because it's probably the tablet that's doing it. Um, if the sound's coming through the computer, you could use you could switch it to computer sound. Um, no, it's on an amplifier on the windowsill. Okay, no. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, which, okay. which is all I that's all I use to teach, and it's usually fine. I don't know. Yeah, why. it's because I'm making noise. Can you Let's move the amplifier on the time. Uh, I think that question was: Could you move the amplifier nearer the microphone? <laughs> You also might find it's good for some and not others, and that's all to do with bandwidth in different places. And yeah, not a lot you can do. Hmm. Mine's right, not the amp too is bad now right next to the computer. Let's try that again, shall we? Yeah. <laughs>
How are we doing? Musically? Better, but it's still fading in and out a bit, but I think it's probably down to bandwidth now, isn't it? It could well be, yeah. And we've, we've so. got a um, line of sight issue mm. um, with, the, with the Bluetooth as well. So, um, that's it. Okay, um, next time I won't move at all and let's see what happens with that. Moving on to the next step, as everybody's, as long as everybody's feeling that timing inflection change, then I've got a point, the point across that I'd like to get across. Okay, um, so what we're looking at now is to put the foot up in place. The foot up is six double steps and then two single steps. Now we didn't cover single steps at the beginning, so let's just do that now. <clears throat> and a single step, unlike a double, is literally just a step and a hop and a step and a hop. Um, and you put two of those on the end of the six double steps that you're going to do. So it's one, two, three, hop times six. One hop, one hop. Put your feet together as a landing and then jump and land. Your musician should catch you on the landing because a jig a musician, when they're playing for you, will play to your footfalls. And that's one of the reasons we got Tony here and he's watching me through the window so that the music that comes through is exactly going to get sent, hopefully, to my footfalls. Well, that worked, didn't it? <laughs> okay, so let's do that whole section. That's an eight bar section. Um, let's do that whole section um, without the hands to begin with, please. Okay, how are we doing? Did that music come through? Yeah. That was good. That time it was good. Excellent. Excellent. The, um, the next bit to add is the hand movement at the, uh, on the single steps. Um, and what you've got in the step hop part is a step and step and movement to make. So your step and is going to be down, up, down, up. Again, if you if you um, if you've got Lynn pinned, you'll see her doing it, and it's a down up and down up movement. So it's quicker than the double step movement in terms of its hand movement. So you've got one, two, three, four for double, and then you've got one and up and down and up. Um, those experienced Cotswolders amongst you will already have realised your hands are now in the wrong place for the jump. And that's deliberate. Because you need to just simply move your hands to the gather position to effect the jump next. That will give you what looks like a hanky flick. 
what I would encourage you to do very strongly is to forget the fact that there's a hanky flick and forget it completely and just do the movements that you know you need to do to get that, that step and that hand position right. And what you'll find is that the hanky flick will just occur naturally without you even having to worry about it. Um, this is a tripping point in this uh, tradition. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate it without music to begin, hopefully. Um, I expect Lynn will go along with me so you can pin her for her view as well. And uh, um, we'll I take a look have. at that. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're going to go. Four, five, down and up and down. Okay. Was that as clear as mud? Perfect. <laughs> I'm glad about the mud bit. Have we got anybody not understanding? Pauline? Doesn't understand. I think you've got a few of these. Okay. Um, what I'll do is to, uh, is to run that through a few times. And again, probably pin to Lynn to see it as well. Don't forget she's there for watching. Yeah. Um, and then um, we'll come back after three repetitions and see what happens next. I think the Mileses are having problems. <laughs> okay. Um, So I'm waving at the music. that better? Can people respond with this if they're happy and that if they'd like to do it again? Oh, lots of thumbs up. There's a, there's a couple not though. Okay, for those couple not, could they make an indication of how we might help? Been asked if you can say it again in words exactly what's going on. Okay. So you're going to go down two, three, hop, 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 down, hop, down, hop, flick, up. And that should have been the whole section. I think you did one extra hand there, but not to worry. <laughs> it's more difficult when you try and break it down. Uh, I would never was good at math. <laughs> Can you just uh, go over the last tiny uh, little bit, hanky bit? Okay. I've lost you. I've lost you. Can you speak, Lou? 
Oh, I've lost it. Catching? Yeah, Andrew's iPad's gone. My uh, mind's gone. Oh dear, what am I doing? Um, it's fine here. Who is it that's having um, problems? Somebody's not muted. Don't be one. I can't. I can't see anything. I've lost the picture. Who is that? Can you tell me your name, please? Anne. Anne Wilkes. Let's try and find you. Well, hi, Anne. <laughs> hi, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you may not have your video on. Um, it's working it's for everyone it's else. Oh, I've got it on now. I've got it. That's good. Sorry. Very good. Fantastic. That's all right. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, both of the devices here are okay. They're working still. Although, to be to be fair, we we've, we've got four devices working through this internet here today. <laughs> <laughs> Just as well, we're on fibre. So. <laughs> so yeah, I. I've, I spotted a couple of just one thing I suppose Andrew is that some people when they bring their arms up they're quite close together and some people are quite wide apart so you could you just like when they're coming up say how you want it to be and then also um, that, just that last little uh, the last little bit of that um, okay jump. Um, th th there's one or two things to say about um, that which which sometimes actually involve jig dancing rather than anything else um, Jig dancing is is yours. It's selfish. You do it pretty much on your own with a musician. If you want to bring your hands together and do it, and I, you know, praying above my head position, then do it. I don't have a view as to whether that's right or wrong in in that. The second point to make is, um, as long as you never stop in a jig, nobody knows you've gone wrong, even if you think you have. So don't tell them. Um, the third point is, if you're going to learn this so that you can do Ilmington as a set dance with a team, what your foreman says is right, is right. And nobody else. OK, so I'm not going to tell you the definitive right. I'm going to tell you how I interpreted what I read. And that's all I can give you. Um, but what your foreman says is the default correct thing for your team. So please bear that in mind when you go back and argue with them. Why wouldn't you argue with them? Everybody argues with the foreman. So, <laughs> um, so that, that would be what I do. I'm probably going to do whatever happens in the moment. So if I said I want shoulder wide, I'll probably not do it shoulder wide. If I wanted it over my head, I'll probably do something else. Um, so this isn't a do what I say, not do what I do moment. This is, um, I have no view. If it's comfy for you and that's how your body works, I'd rather you did that than some arbitrary decision on, on that. Um, hopefully that literally, you know, devolves the responsibility for this to, to the individual person quite nicely. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, have we still got a need to do that end section again? I've got That's a couple yes. of people, a couple of people asking a to just do that. Would like to do it again. Yeah. yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, Jean, I don't know the answer to your question. Um, and Sarah, we're about to do that bit again. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know either, Jean. I just had a fiddle around and I can't see how you do that. I'm sure it's possible, but uh, I don't I'm know how to do Jean, it. You can, right, okay. You can, uh, if you've got the latest version of Zoom, you can drag and drop people. So you could put them at the beginning of your screen. If you have it on, um, if you have it on gallery view, you can move people around. So you can move the people you want to watch to the front screen. Yeah, you can't highlight two people, can you? Same no, no. no. No, that's a downside. But you could put the two. You could put the two people you want to watch at the beginning, and then just sort of shrink your screen so you only see them. You might want to put yourself in there so you can see yourself. Anyway, we probably need to get on with the workshop. So have a have a play between now and next week. Okay, so the the, the end section is down, hop, up, hop. 
what I will say is I probably don't dance it as a foot together jump. I probably dance it as a step and land. Yeah, that tends to be what we do. And I think that's probably where we, we found the notation. So you're, you're basically going to step and then land on both feet. Oh, I, I don't know in northwest or border whether there's a, a crossover into into that, but in in Cotswold it's it's step and jump, or step jump um, is the the thing. It may be worth saying that when any of the collectors talked about a jump, they meant a landing on both feet. They didn't define how you were to take off. So you can take off from two feet or one feet, one foot. It, it, it's it's up to you, really. Um, but this one definitely is a step and land. <clears throat> so again, it would be one hop, two hop, step, land. Has everybody got front and back view of that? that one's wrong. I have, um, I think given Pauline and they're probably in the Federation archive, a set of videos that I did in April for this. Um, so if you need them, contact me or her or, or Jenny and um, they'll, they'll share, give you the link share, which will show it um, recorded. Um, but I did these in April during the first lockdown. Um, and those people who are on the Koki list, um, Dave, Jess, etc., you will um, you will already have received this. Ab, you've got this already. So. It's also on Koki's YouTube channel. It is. I can send a link out to that uh, to everyone uh, after the workshop. So you can see. Um, OK. What I'd like to move on to now is we've got about we've got about 20 minutes left, so we've, we've got long enough to cover the whole section as well um, and then add this next bit onto it. Um, I want to do the first half of the chorus, which introduces another step. Um, and this is the side step movement. In this particular instance, they're open side steps. And an open side step means that your leg and your arm go away from the center line of your body rather than cross over the center line of your body. Um, and to show you, both Lynn and I are going to do this, you will be going that way. And that's an open movement. With this particular um, side step, your elbow will be close into your side. Not all of them are, but literally keep your elbow welded to your waist. Okay, so that it's literally jammed into your rib cage and your waist. And then you will be going stepping across to the side. I prefer to see side steps done to the side. Lots of times you'll find that people turn their bodies and then do a double step going in a different direction. The other feature about a side step being a side step is the feet will cross each other. So your second footfall will go behind the lead foot. And what I mean by that is it's across, behind, across and hop. And that would be a one bar side step. So it's important to go sideways. It's important that the feet cross. You lead with one arm only. And that marks the step as being completely different to a double step. Okay, now this one, the side step sequence is four bars long for this dance. So you need to go to the side twice. Now, those of you who are counting will realize you can't put a hop in the middle and be on the correct foot. 
So you just literally do seven crosses and then a hop on the end of that as the eighth movement. So it'll be side behind, side behind, side behind, side behind, side, hop. Did I count right? Maybe not. <laughs> Literally, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hop. And then you go back in the other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the arm movement is a twist twice per bar up in front. Literally, one, two, three. Arms into the elbow, elbows into the waist. Please make sure that your elbows are right into your waist and that your hand is pointing straight out to the side of you as much as the opening of your shoulder will allow. And then you twist up in front to give you the lift. You always go with an upward movement because of the, the, the lifting um, action of the muscle tissue in that direction. Pin Lin, she's doing it now. Okay. Does anybody need that again? Can we have the signals? Yeah, that's okay. Paul, well, do it again. Uh, yes, the hanky always comes up in front. Um, that gives you the lift, the dancing lift, rather than drive you into the ground. Because if you go down in front, it, 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 it's a very destructive, um, compressing movement. But if you go to the side upwards, then you will be... Okay. Um, Right, Lynn, would you demonstrate again, but say something first, please. That's the side step. Okay, we go Okay, has everybody got that one? Quite happy with that. Right, should we do that with some music? Right, we're going to have the end of the A music and into the first part of the, uh, the, the B music. I think that's the message I just sent. <laughs> Okay, does everybody get the idea of that? We're all good, we're all good, we're all good. Everybody on my screen's good. Some people are standing still. <laughs> um, brilliant, so let's put it all together. <laughs> so we're gonna have an A intro. We're gonna have, um, I'm just gonna write this down. Um, Because the uh, 
I've got WhatsApp going with Tony in the car so we can see what I want. <clears throat> so we're going to have an A as a once to yourself, in with a jump, right foot start, six doubles, two singles, step jump, two lots of side steps. Okay. Uh, Claudia, it's a hop. I'll show you that before we do it. Okay, no problem. So what it is, the sidestep section is step behind, step behind, step behind, step, hop leaves your other leg in the air so that you can go back the other way. Step behind, step behind, step behind, step, hop. Claudia, is that okay? Brilliant, okay, brilliant. Are you happy to move on? Yeah, good. Um, okay. Can we have the whole dance to do to date, please? Uh, whole dance up to now. Whole dance up to there. Thanks. once through up to that point um, what I'd like to do is to do all of that again perhaps three or four times I know it breaks the music but I think that's probably worth just having a go at that another couple of three times and that will leave us just about time for the warm down and then any question and answer at the end yeah we're good with that Pauline Um, exactly that, twice more, please. Twice more for that, that section, just to the end of the side step bit. Okay. Yeah, a couple of times through.
Any questions before we warm down? Thank you, Sarah. No, that's normal speed. It's probably worth talking a bit about the speed of the dance. Actually, that's a good point to bring up. Um, one of the things that we do regularly as uh, Knights of King Ina is dance probably a lot slower than most people. And the reason for that is you can get more height more effort, it's more showy, and you can complete all of the steps well, show them completely, rather than rush into the next bit. For some people, they will need it a bit faster, but that actually is about perfect for us. If you want it faster, talk to your musician. Decide how fast you want it but please take a look at it and, and, and look that you're not rushing yourself through the dance and therefore being indistinct with your steps and not showing what you want to show to, um, to your audience who you're entertaining. You're doing this for yourself, but you're entertaining some other people as well. And having something that looks overly rushed just looks overly rushed. Do you have anything to add, Lynn? No, I, I, no, I don't. I think you've said it all. Yeah. Um, I mean, we do watch other people that dance quite quickly. Um, uh, general, generally, we like it slower. So all those points Drew mentioned, just to be able to finish things properly and try and get off the ground a bit more. Yeah. The, um, the, the handkerchief use actually pretty much defines the speed the dance should go. Um, if the handkerchief is considered as an extension of your arm and your hand, if you're pulling your handkerchief too fast, you, you, you're basically going to get an odd look to the handkerchief. Um, it won't be an arm extension, it'll be, it'll be kind of out here in front. And if you're going too slow, it all looks a bit limp and droopy. Really? So if you're, if you're you know, it depends whether you want the flippy look or whether you want the float and go kind of look uh, to how you're doing. Um, okay, so if there aren't any more questions, I see nothing come up. Uh, um, Helena, yes, I've lost fitness this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? I think we all have. Um, okay, so for a warm down, it's now time to replenish those muscles with the resources that you've lost from them. And, and it's time to stretch them right out to stop the blood pooling in them and cramping. So you want to do the, <clears throat> the stretch across movements for your shoulders. And rather than just go into it and come back out, you hold the stretch in place. You do the same with the muscles of your legs. This is when you do your lunging movements. and you hold the move. You see, in terms of RTBs, is a good time to practice your um, balance. I've got lots to say on balance positions and leg line. I'm an osteopath, I will. <laughs> okay, don't forget to go sideways. If you're in a position of wanting to do range increasing in terms of your joints, this is the time to do it. This is the time to push the stretches in completely. If you need to use um, extra bits of equipment to do it, this is the time to use them. And the duration of a stretch in an ideal world will be for as long as the tension remains in the muscle. 
So you could be at the warming down for some time to get those, those extra benefits. Um, the most minimal it should be is to return your breath to resting levels. So from breathless to sitting just tidal breathing is about correct. And that's the minimum. All right. One of the cautions that I will put in in stretching is I don't like people bending backwards. I spend my entire life fixing people who've been bending backwards. <laughs> um, so curling head forward, head sideways, fine, but head back, please don't. Um, that one is not a safe movement for anybody to make. Um, and don't do these things quickly. Let the stretch really develop and then dissipate when you do them. Um, and take your time over these things. There is um, more information on that, again, on the Morris Federation pages and YouTube. Um, and I did a video and I written, wrote the paper for that um, that's uh, available to everybody um, who's a um, Morris Federation member. I think that's right. So. Yeah, I'll send the link to the video with the link to the jig video, the warm ups and the jig um, after this. OK, so homework is good stepping oh. for next week. <clears throat> Run this through and practice it. I'll be going over it briefly before we do the chorus and a slow. And that's what we've got planned for the next session. And that will really test my counting, I tell you. <laughs> Thanks, must go now. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. You. Take care, Ian. Shall we wrap up now then, Andrew? Yep. We're excellent. Good. We, well, we, 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 we that's been excellent. Um, and all the top tips about warming up and warming down are really, really important. And uh, we often forget them as Morris dancers, don't we? but we're all guilty sometimes. Um, okay, so uh, it'd be nice if you could unmute yourselves and uh, give Andrew and Lynn and uh, Tony in the car <laughs> playing, uh, a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you.